So suppose we're trying to integrate a rational expression that has sine x and cosine x, and however, none of the methods that we've seen so far works out nicely. In that case, you may want to give this method a try. This is called the Weierstrass substitution, and this is how we're going to start with. We are going to use a new variable, and traditionally, we call this to be t, and we set this equal to tangent of, and suppose the integral is in terms of x. So right here, we will say x over 2. I know this is kind of random, but it will work. So let me derive all the formulas that we need in this video, and you can watch my next video. I will show you how the magic works. So this right here is also called the tangent half angle substitution because we let t equals to tangent of x over 2. And just like I mentioned earlier, the integral is involving sine x and cosine x. So based off with this, we should figure out what sine x equal to in terms of t and cosine x is equal to what in terms of t and then because this is an integral in terms of x we also have the dx at the end isn't it we should also figure out what's dx in terms of t so this right here will be my summary and i'm going to show you how to derive all the things that we need right here let's do this first sine x is equal to what well of course, we have to refer back to what we said right here. t is equal to tangent of x over 2. And let me write this down again right here. We know tangent of x over 2. This is equal to t, right? Hmm, I need to figure out what's sine of x. And by the way, if you look at this, we can once again draw a right triangle because we have tangent of an angle, and this is equal to t, which is the same as saying t over 1. And we can draw a right triangle like this. Always put a right angle this way and always put the angle right here. The angle is x over 2. This way it's more consistent. So put the angle right here and then the right angle right here. So this is the angle. Tangent by definition is the opposite over adjacent, right? So we will have t right here and the adjacent will be 1, right? And then the hypotenuse is right here. To figure that out, we use the Pythagorean theorem, which we can just do 1 squared, which is 1, right? So we put on 1 squared, which is 1, plus t squared, and then don't forget we take the square root, and that will be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. I think this will be helpful, and now let's check this out. Sine x, right? We have to figure out what this is, and you see, this is sine of x, but then the information that we have is based off with the half angle. This is x over 2. So we are going to break down the x a little bit. I'm going to look at this as this, which is the same as sine of 2 times x over 2. Can we do that? Sure, because 2 times x over 2 is definitely still x. And the reason for me to do that is, I can use the double angle formula now. Sine of 2 of something is going to be 2 times sine of this angle, which is x over 2, times cosine of this angle, which is x over 2. And now you see, can we figure this out, sine of x over 2? Yes, we can use this right triangle. You see, 2 is still the 2, and then sine of x over 2. By looking at this triangle, we know sine is the opposite, which will be t over the hypotenuse, which is this square root of 1 plus t squared, and then we are done, right? How about can we also figure out cosine of x over 2? Sure, because this is the angle, cosine is just what? The adjacent, which is the 1, over the hypotenuse, which is that? Square root of 1 plus t squared. Multiply this out. 2t on the top, over square root square root cancel so we just have the regular 1 plus t squared and this is for sine x and now let me summarize everything right here this is 2t over 1 plus t squared so now let me figure out what's cosine of x in terms of t and let me erase this right here and we'll pretty much do the same way right so let's look at cosine x as cosine of 2 times x over 2 and then we are going to use the double angle formula for cosine this version, this is the same as saying cosine square of this angle, which is x over 2, minus sine square of this angle, which is x over 2, like this. And then, let's see. 
This is cosine square of x over 2. Look at this triangle, x over 2 is right here, which is the angle, and then cosine is the adjacent of a hypotenuse, which is that, right? So we have 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. And don't forget, this is being squared, right? And then we subtract sine squared, so let's put this down as a parenthesis squared, and then sine x over 2, this is the angle, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is t over that, t over square root of 1 plus t squared. And now what? Well, well, square square root cancel, 1 square just 1, so first part we will have 1 over 1 plus t square. Then we subtract t square over square root square cancel, 1 plus t square on the bottom. Of course, at the end we can put them together, over 1 plus t square on the bottom. This right here will be for cosine x, 1 minus t square over 1 plus t square. At the end, let's figure out what's dx, and let me erase this again. To figure out dx, I'm going to look at this right here. So let me write it down as tangent of x over 2, which is the same as t. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the inverse tangent on both sides. So we can look at this as x over 2 being the same as inverse tangent t, right? And then we can multiply both sides by 2, so we have x is equal to 2 times the inverse tangent of t. By looking at this equation, we can just differentiate both sides, we can get dx right away. dx will be 2 times the derivative of this, which is 2 times the derivative of inverse tangent of t is 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. So we can put this down right there, the 2 on the top though. So we have 2 over 1 plus t squared dt for dx. So once again, these are the ingredients that we can use when we're trying to integrate a rational expression that has sine x and cosine x. And if you check out my next video, I'm going to show you examples and you'll see how this will help us out.